did you feel flattered when someone says to you, Margaret Thatcher? Well, yes, I guess, because I feel like she doesn't necessarily live inside me. I think, I mean, there's a couple things that we do share. Your Majesty. I think we have enough respect for one another personally to ask ourselves some of the bigger questions, woman to woman. I'm, I'm sure uh, some people in my life would agree that some things we share, but I don't feel like we're that similar. So I guess one can take it as a compliment in that they think that I might be able to stretch to that. My goal is to change this country from being dependent to self-reliant. And I think in that I am succeeding. How long does it take every morning, 5am in the makeup trailer, to become the Prime Minister? It actually doesn't take that long because I think it was an hour and a half for both hair and makeup. You know, because we're not, we're not doing prosthetics. We're not doing, you know, in the end we decided not to do teeth. The biggest thing that took the time was the wig and, and gluing it. It's I had in my mind's eye, there was a crane involved. <laughs> That's quite funny. We are the same age after all. Really? Just six months between us. Oh? And who is the senior? I am. Mum. Could you help me? I'm, I, I'm asking for a friend, obviously, but what's the best way <laughs> to become chummy with Olivia Coleman or Helena Bonham Carter? Um, again, this isn't for me. Run a karaoke bar, <laughs> a really good karaoke bar. And I guarantee when lockdown is over, Olivia Coleman will, will come and, and visit. Um, Helena, she likes a nap, Helena. She does. I, and I've, I've heard, I say that because I've actually heard her talk about it publicly. She likes she she really values her sleep. So if you maybe sent her a really comfy mattress or a really comfy <laughs> pillow or something, I guarantee she'd be your friend for life. I'm already getting a reputation, so let's be <laughs> careful. When I know it's a while since people have started um, that people stop you in the street and say, "Oh my God, it's you," but can you well, now? Wait, wait. Why has it been a while? Masks. Twenty twenty. People may not necessarily spot you as easily. Okay, okay. I see what you mean. <laughs> you were like, how dare they? <laughs> Can you clock what the fan is a fan of from a distance? Can you go X-Files, sex education, the fall? Interesting. Interesting you say that. Uh Yes, I, I, I can probably clock if it's going to be a sex ed fan. So, why don't you start by telling me your earliest memory of your scrotum? Often surprised about is when somebody opens their mouth and I expect them to say sex ed, and they say X-Files. And I think, what? Really? Waldo, look, Colton plays by the book and you don't. They feel your methods, your theories are... Spooky. <laughs> you still what? Like... How old are you? Or, or, you know, whatever. Yeah, I'm still surprised by that, I guess. Are the sex education fans just presuming you are your character and getting horribly informal very quickly? Fortunately, no. Fortunately. <sighs> Thank the Lord. Um, but I do remember the first time that somebody vocalised that they recognised me from sex ed. I was standing in my bedroom with the builder. And I hadn't even thought about that because the show had launched or something and I really wasn't. And all of it was literally like a foot away from me, pre-lockdown. And he turned around and goes, you know, <laughs> are you that lady from Sex Ed? Was he, was he Scandinavian by any chance? <laughs> no. So. He, he really wasn't. <laughs> but that was, uh, it really took me by surprise. Yeah. Are you shooting it right now? Is that where you're at? That is not where I'm at. It is being shot, but I'm not there yet. I go in a couple of weeks. So you get dropped in to spice it up and make it good. I get it. I get it. I've been asking everybody this question. I'm not going to get the chance again, but what mementos have you kept from all of your gigs <laughs> and professions and portrayals? And I was wondering if there was anything from Miss Thatcher that you took home. I actually have a storage locker in Los Angeles that has a lot of things that I have um, <clears throat> kept over the early years, 
including, you know, heads of aliens and my own characters, Tombstone and etc. But um, I haven't been really doing that lately. I, th I think I might have walked away from set with a uh, some letterhead that said Margaret Thatcher on it. I think I think that's the extent of it. I you know I should have stuffed a wig in my bag or something. You need a big bag. <laughs> Yeah. Truly. Or I would have nicked a handbag. That would have been me, but I guess Ooh, I'm more of a thief. That, that would have been hard to nick because I had the, the one that she used most of the time was specially made and I, I wouldn't have gotten away with that. Deadlined. Um, thank you so, so much for taking the time to be a little bit ridiculous with me and congratulations again on the show. Um, and uh, enjoy the press reacting to it. I. Eek. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to keep up to date. You can listen to my Radio 1 movies and TV podcast screen time on BBC Sounds. And you can find these interviews in full on BBC iPlayer by searching Movies with Ali Plum. <laughs>